The first thing is maximizing your experience, but not in the way that you think you've heard before. You've ever had a lead and the enemy jungler catches up, or you've had a lead and you struggle to kind of push that killer instinct for a win? Let me show you. This Belveth decides to start Wolves, Grump, Blue, go on down, right? That's because at least in starting on the red side. What's going to happen afterwards is that we see the mid lane award the Raptors, the best ward in the game. Now, the Belveth could avoid this by going Krugs, Red, Raptors, and delay showing, but obviously in this case, that slows your clear down. So she just goes for the Raptors into the red. This was a coaching session, so I said, hey, you might be invaded here because we saw that ward. He drags it into the bush. He's able to outsmite the Leeson when he invariably shows up. And then we escape. That sounds good, no? Yeah, well, the Leeson dies. How about even better? This is the thing about the scenario. Right after you do this and you go do Krugs, we have to think about, all right, the Lee Sin now made an aggressive mistake and died. How do I maximize my experience? Well, first and foremost, you need to have much, much more precise and brutally efficient base timers. If your tracking is on point and you see the Lee Sin with 16 CS, you know the guy is going to come back down for his blue and grump. You know that the enemy bottom lane now has positional prio. And you know that if you go for the Scuttle Crab, you will be collapsed upon because when you ran away, you saw the ward get placed. So simply put, all you gotta do is go back to base. Now you can control the top side very, very easily and basically predict where Leeson's gonna be. This right here, this waffling, this fighting that you're watching, no one dies, but no one's getting experience. You're not maximizing it. And I think you understand that at this stage, the top side camps have respawned, right? The Grump and the Wolves. They will be level 4. The first two camps that you do after a buff or, you know, when you start in them will be level 4. These camps, if you will allow me to show you, will be level 4 at around 16 to 20 minutes. So instead of spending time doing top scuttle or blue side quadrant and then invading the Leeson when he invariably goes up, we are going back to base, delayed, and then only getting the scuttle crab. Now the good play is to go through Vakai.gg. Not only do I have a free jungle improvement resource, I also have a dedicated program with jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching classes, a jungle VOD library, special weekly content you'll see nowhere else, as well as all of this hosted in a private jungle discord. And if there is one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers go from low elo to high elo, as seen by the great number of success stories from the end of last season and already the beginning of season 14. So to climb faster than everybody you know and to jungle diff every game you play, and to Vakai.gg or click the link in the description below. Once you see Lee Sin and you don't need to see him, you should be able to track this. You know, logically, he's going to come back to the top side here. When you see him, make the aggressive maneuver. Now, not all champions can do this, but if your champion can, go ahead and deny the Krugs away from the Lee Sin. If he sticks around, you kill him. Unfortunately, he sees us, but he backs off. You get the Krugs, you get the Grubs. Now, overall, this is a great play, right? We've made the right tempo adjustments. The Lee Sin is completely denied. Thumbs up. Obviously, this video will focus on every rank below Master Tier. The design of this is to give you tips to get to gold, platinum, emerald, diamond, and master at any stage in season 14. Now you see the Lee Sin will obviously go to the bottom side. His Grump will respawn, there's a dragon, you know your camps are up. So instead of maximizing your experience and taking away the opportunity for counter jungling, because we'd had a bad base timer, we are now stuck here with the Lee Sin able to take all of our stuff. However, his red buff spawns. So basically you can say, all right, you know what? You can have the dragon. I don't have the pride for that anyway. I'll steal your red. And then I can either fall back to my blue side and just guarantee those camps are not going to reset at a much higher level. Or I could even think about cutting you off from the counter jungling moment. Here's the thing. The Lee Sin shows up. If you press tab and you watch his CS and you understand what he's done, you see the 32, right? That's a 16 CS invade death. Comes out of base and does a grump that's 20. Obviously, he then has his blue, you took the scuttle, you got a double scuttle, he gets 28 on his raptors, you push him out of the Krug zone, and then he comes out of base, does his grump, shows up bottom lane on the tri ward, okay. I know that this guy will have a respawn of the wolf shortly, he has a dragon available, I'm in total control here. However, what this Belveth does is then go top lane to try ganking Akali up two levels, and you burn her ult, but it's still an Akali, it's a low ganking probability of success, and then goes back to base on vision. So instead of basing properly, instead of thinking more about the enemy jungler and keeping that denial going, we make a really bad ganking assessment. And that's the third thing here. Stop hyper-focusing on which lanes you think you must gank, and then instead focus on what the enemy jungler is doing and look to gank around those tempos. If you came into the game thinking, I need to gank top lane a thousand times, I'd say, well, okay, that's a nice notion, but if it's an Akali, why? And two, if the map dictates that you need to be somewhere else, you need to be somewhere else. You might have better win conditions and better opportunities elsewhere. Now, you might not think this is so good, but the problem is it could be so much worse. You got to fix these mistakes. 
because the blue side quadrant might be all you have. If the Lee Sin did his job and just didn't do the dragging and you have no vision, you should have and could have lost your entire red side. As you would have seen, the Lee Sin is not so good either and wasn't tracking or extrapolating and he didn't even know his red was gone, which is a bit tragic. I mean, you should know better in this D2 range. However, what this does allow is the Lee Sin to rinse all his camps, maximize his experience in a losing scenario, no coin flipping from the invades or objectives, go back to base and come to the bottom side. Now the Balvath makes a great read. Because we see the Lee Sin do this, Krugs, Red, Raptors, don't keep sequencing here, loop back and gank ahead of him, take away that option, ensure you mechanically, you know, execute your champion, and please, if you have Smite on a Jin, use a Smite. The guy would have died with a Smite, you get to kill, you don't need the Silas to roam and pick it up with a Proto Belt. That's obviously something you should be aware of. And then we, are, of course, are tracking the Lee Sin, we know he's on the Gromp, we do a little bit of asshole jungling, which I recommend everybody to do. That's not part of the seven tips, but you know, it's a bonus tip. Hey, you know what? Let's make it one of the points. Yes, be a dick when you have the power, get into the jungle, push them out, steal the camps away, really make enemy junglers hate playing the game. And I think we all can agree that is fundamentally one of the enjoyment part of the roles because it doesn't involve the laners and it just involves us being a bit of a bully. And that's absolutely fine because if you can stop the enemy jungler from existing and your laners are winning, you'll win games. If you can stop the enemy jungler from existing and your laners are losing and you could gank them, then you can win games because the enemy jungler's not on the picture and you can be the ganker. So please understand if you have the power, make sure the enemy jungler is removed from the game. Because from this, now you know he's gonna go to the top side, so you can go back to base and again defend against the Grubs, use your prior and basically control the game. The problem is, you have noticed that there has not been a window of opportunity for us to do these blue camps for a few minutes. We missed the first logical place to do them, we missed the second logical place to do them, and now, really, we're in the phase where we're not thinking too much about them. So your experience in gold was not maximized. You've denied the lease and everything, he can't play the game, great. But if you want to get Master T, if you want to get Gold, if you want to get Diamond, these things are not always going to break your way in terms of enemy junglers making the wrong call. You could get punished. And we'll come back to this game a little bit later. Let's look at this Amumu example about the base timings just to drive the point home. So we see this Amumu, he does a full clear, he gets a beautiful gank on the top side, well done, Echo, you know, you shouldn't die to it, but you do. We get the top scuttle, we cross mid lane, we see the brand compromised from his own slow clear, and now we're doing this bottom scuttle, pushing it towards the last known brand location, and he can just turn the corner and smite it. So another bonus point, if you know the guy's there and you know he can do that, why not just push it to the lane where you have prio and he has to walk up a long way to steal it and if he does, he will die. But he won't get it in the first place, so it's irrelevant. Now you decide to do your grump on your walls. This is sound. Stop. You have to go back to base at the stage. It's a long first sequence. You're sitting pretty on 36 CS. It should be 40 CS already, which is quite outrageous. And you go back to base with maximum gold. Now you can go topside for the respawn of your raptors, your krugs, Repeat ganks in top lane, you know the brand should be sequencing down, and if he isn't, you will punish him, but that's where the grubs are gonna be. The problem with staying out here, as you see, is the Echo does a roaming collapse on your Raptors. This is not something you can call or predict, it doesn't really matter. It happens, it sucks, you just get your Raptors, you go to your Krugs. The problem with not basing after Wolves is that now when you want to gank this top side again at a prime level 6, you know Brand's gonna be in the vicinity and probably think about cutting up for the grubs. But when you wanna go for this fight now, you're gonna have 2,000 gold unspent. You're gonna have 2,000 gold that isn't effectively in your team's pocket or in your pocket. And what follows is you go all in on the Brand when you see him, you think you can kill him, everybody else rotates, and you die. Now, the play, whether it's good or bad, is a little bit irrelevant here. The point is, if I have itemization advantage, and I know I can kill the enemy jungler, then I can take these kinds of plays. Then I can think about doing a grub fight if I wanted to, because I'm actually strong. In this case, you haven't spent. You're weak, you don't actually have the damage to kill Brand, and I guarantee you, you kill him, and at the very least go one for one, if you have actually based. And likewise, because you're now dead, you're not maximizing your experience, you're not maximizing your gold, and you're giving up these objectives for free. And where this comes into question is, when you are around these objectives, these grubs and these dragons, and you see these small windows, like this Nunu does, to go ahead and snack a dragon. You know there's a gap between the enemy bottle lane going back to base and coming back on the map. You know the enemy jungler is in the area, but you're not too concerned, you're a Nunu. Objectively here, pun not intended, but I guess happy accident, the Diana shows up to contest this dragon. You're a Nunu. Keep attacking, keep attacking. Q smite, it's gone, it's secured. You turn on the Diana, you kill her. What happens though is we don't actually go on the dragon. We're for some reason too afraid to actually Q smite. The Nunu then turns on the Diana, which is of course fine and she dies. But the Diana had to think about maximizing her experience. 
I'm not even going towards this dragon. It's a Nunu. I'm giving this up. You're doing your whole red side quadrant. You're cutting up. You're thinking grubs. You're thinking top side quadrant. You're thinking counter jungling. You're observing what the Nunu does after this and then playing around that. You have all of the world available to you and you decide to contest a dragon versus a Nunu who was afraid of your presence but shouldn't have been. And then of course now it just doesn't work out for really anybody. Later on in this game, the same thing kind of happens. There's a whole grouping of champions and everything around this dragon. And again, this is actually the same dragon. That's my whole point. That should have been a free dragon for Nunu, waste of time for the Diana, and the Nunu should have been able to then control the top side. Instead though, because that dragon wasn't taken and that fight devolved into a bit of a fiesta, we are now back here a few minutes later and the Nunu just decides to start doing it when everybody's here and we actually need to fight first. And if you see the fight go badly or if you see a situation where it's like, you know what, this is just gone, I shouldn't even be here, leave. The sooner you leave away from these objectives, the sooner you just take your bottom side cams and bounce to the top side, the better you will be in terms of controlling games. The faster you will be at counter jungling, at diving other laners, at splitting the map in a better way. Now, before we talk about the sixth and seventh thing here, which are very, very important, and we'll see how the Belfast, or if the Belfast was able to control the Lee Sin further, and maybe if the Mumu had the ability to solo carry this game while building a little bit wonky, we need to talk about thinking about rewarding yourself with camps, a concept I started pushing many years ago when we had a more farming based meta, but it definitely still works now, using those camps as a reward for doing something good on the map. However, we had a great example in this coaching session with this Kane, who, you know, didn't fully use the outside in rule of taking things furthest away from his jungle and then of course falling back to it. Instead, you know, he had a double scuttle opportunity, but instead of doing the Raptors first into the scuttle into his blue side, he did the scuttle and then the Raptors, and then he got pushed out of his own jungle. Kind of a tragic situation if you ask me, but hey, that's within our control. The problem was then he felt desperate in other games to maybe go for a gank and then fall back to his camps because he thought, hey, I need to reward myself with these camps. Well, yes, this is a great idea. And it also applies the outside in rule because, hey, let me do the bottom lane before I do my grump, kinky kinky. But sometimes it's okay to say, look, this is an ungankable lane. I need to wait for things to develop. Maybe the enemy jungle is going to be arriving. Maybe I should just do my camps first and then go for the gank. This is also good. You have to recognize when you need to do it one way and when you need to do it another. Now, if you do everything I've said in this video up until this point, look at this bottom lane fight. The cane is probably 25 to 30 seconds behind where he should be because of the waffling, because of not counter jungling correctly, because of being out of position, and as such is only leaving base now when he could be ganking this lane first and then falling back to his camps. But because he's behind on tempo, you can't force things as they should be. You are now in a compromised state, you have to adapt to it. Do your camps first, wait for your laners to show up again, and then see if you can gank. If you cannot, can you do an objective? Can I counter jungle? Should I just keep sequencing my own camps and look for a place somewhere else? Don't force the reward camps for action when the action makes no sense. So it's got to cover that assessment first. And finally, the killer instinct versus the chill, not winning, doing the Krugs moment. Let's have a look here at the Belverth game. All you're going to see is a bit of a speed up, but we do not take all our camps. We siege midline against a Ziggs based composition. We have a huge lead overall. The leasing is nothing. Why are we sitting here at around 19, 20 minutes, whatever it might be on the clock on the screen for you right now, doing nothing, looking and probing? Maybe, hey, we killed the Lee Sin, fantastic, but what do we get from it? Oh, we're in his jungle again, what, what do we get for it? There's Killer Instinct and there's Fake Killer Instinct, all right? When you're actually not pushing the map and you're letting them farm up and stall and wait for inhibitors to, you know, come up and go down so they can farm the supers, these things matter. So what the Belva should be doing is saying, guys, look, I'm gonna stop sieging here and kind of drooling around nothing. I'm gonna go split, let my other laner split as well. We'll do a one three one apply pressure to the base. It will force a rotation and oh, look at that. The mid lane has fallen. Now we can kill, now we can kill, now we can bear in, now we can end. L literally, that's it. The killer instinct here was, all right, guys, we're winning, let's take mid. That's the nice way to do things. That's the, you know, would you mind, sir, if I took your mid lane turret? No. Killer instinct. You got to destroy them, remove all hope from the possibility of victory. And sometimes that might mean winning a team fight. Sometimes that might mean you need to split push so that you can actually get through the siege comp because of how strong you are. In this Valvet's case, you saw from the speed up, yeah, it kind of looked okay, but it didn't have that acceleration, that aggressiveness, that let me push the map, take all the turrets and hit your nexus aggression. And the Samumu had the same problem except from the team fighting situation. Look, he's not a Valvet. He's not something like a Mundo tank that could actually split push and do what I just said. He has to be able to say, listen, I'm hugely fed. Let's go ahead and make a huge fight around this dragon. Hey, I'm hugely fed. Let's see if I can win this fight and we can just take the Nexus. No, this guy's doing Krugs while there's a fight down here and he's lucky his team is able to win. What if his team lost? It's not their fault. 
It's your fault. You are the problem, not them. And if you happen to be spot pushing while your team is again in fights and they win without you, if they lose, it's on you. And if your team wants to do Baron and you're like, no, let's trap, and you go 1v4 and you die, and your team gets the Baron and they still win, you're lucky. Very lucky. This Amumu cashed all of his luck for the week in this game because he lacked the killer instinct to say, all right, we win the fight, let's go. The Belvedra was the same thing. So your pressure points in terms of having that killer instinct will either be macro based or it will be team fight based. It will rarely be, let me sit in your jungle and smoke a joint while doing absolutely nothing based because that's what allows stalling, shutdowns and comebacks to happen. Ultimately, what you're really looking for here is how do I dominate the game in such a way that none of these things are even a question mark. Good thing that video is on your screen right now.